Hey there everyone and welcome back to JavaScript course. Now let's move further and before we move further, let me just walk you through where we are right now. Now you have couple of uh, features and you have understanding about what is arrays. We have talked about them quite a lot in our zero to basics. And you also know what is a function and how it is being defined. Now this is the perfect time where we can move on and talk about few things which I left deliberately in the array section so that I can cover them after we have discussed about these functions. Okay, and we're going to be creating a simple application as well. So let's just create a new file and I'm going to call this file as uh, simply trello.js. I hope many of you are aware about the Trello. It's a simple to do application, but a little bit more my friendly one and I just love it. I use it a lot. So there we go. So let's just say we are going to be defining a simple const of days and we're going to have some days in here. So we're going to have our Monday, then we are going to have Tuesday, then we are going to have our Wednesday and we are going to have Thursday and we are going to have Friday and Saturday. Let's just have set. No Sunday. Set. Okay, so no Sundays there. Now what we want to do is we want that somehow we have already learned in the arrays that if you want to access any one of that element, we can simply log that and we can use our days and we can mention just like zero or the first element, which is going to be Monday. What happens if we want to access all of them? Just assume that all of these are stored on some website or some database or some array and we want to access all of them to display on our website. Now here comes the concept of looping. Now you will be hearing a lot about the looping, especially for loop and all of that. But I just want to talk about here just one loop which will be working throughout like your entire JavaScript. And especially with the introduction to some things like React and Angular, this loop has become like the most favorite favorite choice for everyone. So how does this loop work? It's really simple. We're going to have simple days. And for the days, just like we have length, we have something known as for each. And as soon as I have a for each, notice here you can have a callback fn. This is callback function. And then you can do whatever you like to have this function. So a function that accepts up to three argument for each calls. And we are going to talk about that later. First of all, the important point is here it can accept any function, whatever you like to have. Okay. So how we can do that? Just like here, we have declared a simple function uh, just like this one. Let's just copy this and paste that. And we're going to be declaring that at the top. There we go. So now we have a say hello function. We just simply says, and we will edit that a little bit. We don't want that. In fact, we don't need, need this entire line. We just want to prove the concept that yes, it accepts our functions and can perform. So what happens if I just pass on any function like this? Say hello. Save that and let's just open our control, uh, our terminal and try to run this. So we're going to simply say node and the file name is trello.js. So there we go. So notice we have got this greeting message for a number of times. If I check it explicitly, it's one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, there we go. That's nice. And this mon is coming up from this console log here. Okay. And notice we have one, two, three, four, five, and six. Yes. So six times this has looped through. So we are one thing for sure that this for each actually goes through this each array and just do whatever you want to ask exactly for the array length, which is six times in this particular case. For your case, it may be three times. Okay, so that is all cleared up. Now how we can take advantage of this right now we are just passing a function name, but there can be a better way of doing this thing. So we can just remove this. And usually you will rarely find that somebody is declaring a function outside and using it. Using in these cases, we use something known as callback means we use a function which doesn't have any name. Okay, so let me just see, command Z that. So here we can see that our function has a name. What happens if this functions don't have a name? Then this exact syntax can be passed on in place up here. Okay, so let me just do that. We're going to just cut that from here and we're going to place that here. There we go. So this is completely acceptable. Yes, it is. So what you can do is, can I run this? Yes, of course. So let me just open that terminal, clear up everything and run that again. Notice it's working fine, absolutely, but this is not the goal. 
The goal is, since you can pass on an entire function either by name or just in this manner, a without name function called as callback, what you have is you can have access of couple of things here. Now, first of all, what you can do is just like we have got a days here, you can simply name it as day. Now, here is a tricky thing which a lot of people get confused. Notice, first of all, we just have a day here and we just want to print what is inside the day. So instead of this greeting message being printed out every single time, we just want to say, hey, what is inside this day? And to be honest, where this day is coming up from? That's a good question, but first let's run this file and explore a few things. So when I run this file, notice uh, Monday is being printed two times because of this one at line number four, but Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Okay, that is fine. So we have noticed that we have a parameter here in the function which is actually each individual array element that we can print it. But do I always have to name it like that? If it is calling we are as days, this should be called as day. Now this is a usual practice, but you don't need to do it always. You can simply say something like uh, a tiger just for the fun and you can name it as tiger here as well. So feel free to just name it anything, but whatever you are naming it here, you have to use it in here as well in the line number line. And just to prove my point, I can just run this file again and I'm gonna get exact same result. Okay, so now that is clear totally that how we can have it. Now we do have these parameters here, but again, we have one more parameter as well, which is known as index. So notice we are dealing up with this array here so that is why these arrays are also coming up with their position as well. And usually the array index starts from zero, not usually, always starts from zero. So what we can do is we can name these days here as well. So let's do some of the trick stuff. We're gonna call back, whenever we want to do trick stuff, we used to call these uh, tickle guys. Okay, so we're gonna call something like this as day uh, or starts something like that you get that starts with and then we are going to have a dollar sign and these guys and we are going to use some dashes here and then a dollar sign again uh, it's really hard sometimes to come up with these examples so what we're going to say is we're going to be simply using an index here and we're going to simply say index plus one so it starts from actually one we don't want to see zero and we are going to simply say our tiger here I, I know tiger is a really bad word. I would like to go with back with day. That makes much more sense. Tiger is not something I would like to use. So there we go. So what we have done here is we have used the index and we have added one here so that we can have something like starts with uh, one at Monday, starts with two at Tuesday, something like that. And let's just open this again, clear the screen and run that. So there we go. Now we have got one, two, three, four, five. I know this is a little bit weird example saying starts with and then, but you got the point. Now always and always remember one thing here before we uh, wraps up this video is well, whatever the first element is gonna be, it's gonna be the element itself in the array, remember that. And the second parameter is gonna be index of that element. I repeat that again. The first element is always gonna be the element itself in the array and the second element is always gonna be the index value of it. Now, whether you add one to it or not, it's totally optional and completely onto you, but this is something that you should always keep in mind. So now that we have created a simple uh, kind of a trigger for days of the things, I would give you two simple assignment. Create a simple uh, for each loop and create a new uh, array where you can have a loop over uh, the entire months of the year, January, February, and just like that. So this is assignment number one. And assign assignment number two is gonna be simply uh, just look out a little bit and figure out if you can create somehow a to-do list. You have few to-dos in your array and you can just loop through them. So these are like simple real assignment that you should really do. I don't think there should be any problem in doing these assignments. And of course, I'm not gonna be giving you solution of this. If you really require a solution for even these kinds of simple stuff, I highly recommend to watch the previous videos. I hope everybody will be able to do it. So that's it for this video and I'm gonna catch you up in the next one.